Carlos Hyde, most likely owned, 67% right now. Snap count wise, this past week, Duke Johnson saw more of the field. Do you, do you target Carlos Hyde if you're a running back, hungry team, and he's still out there? Yeah. Or would you rather have, I mean, Ronald Jones, Carlos there's, Hyde, or Adrian Peterson? There's Put those other, in order. Uh, of those, I'll go with Ronald Jones. Yeah. He would be my top one of those guys. Like, Carlos Hyde is fine if you need a. Like, I really need someone to pick up and play, but there's other options that we're going to go through that I would prefer over Carlos Hyde. Yeah, if you if you have to if you have to start a guy and you want someone cheap, I mean the thing is is like Carlos Hyde, it's interesting because he's 67 percent owned, but I feel like I should be able to get him super cheap, <laughs> like if he's on waivers. Right. So I'm I'm certainly not spending up for Carlos Hyde. There are other guys that I I think are. Cheap and good options this week. Yeah, another likely owned, but possibly out there. Frank Gore, you know he's going to get consistent work. He may get even more with Josh Allen if he ends up on the shelf. It's not a great matchup against Tennessee, but sheer volume. And the way that this defense plays, you could have some short fields for you, Buffalo. You could. It's about Devin Singletary, though, where he, he did return to some practices last week. It looked like he might sneak in the game. He did not monitor Singletary's health because – that changes it a lot for you? Because Singletary, I don't think coming back off the injury is going to get a lot of work in week one. Perhaps in week one. I'm just saying for the long term of Frank Gore. Once Singletary is back and playing, Frank Gore will still get work, but he's going to he's going to be vultured in a few places. I think the player I'm most interested in terms of available, interesting, throwing the football a little bit. We made the joke about it. Yeah. But it's Jalen it Samuels. Jalen Samuels. Yes. You know, 10 for 26 and a touchdown on the ground, ran the Wildcat, 8 for 57 through the air on eight targets. He passed the eye test. He looked like he was a valuable weapon in this newly assembled offense, and he got to throw the ball three times. So, throw. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tap, yeah, tap pass. Tap yeah. pass. That's funny, though, right? I mean, you, you do the tap pass, and you get the credit as the quarterback in that situation. So, so ridiculous. You need to exploit that as a fantasy football owner, and so – I think Jalen Samuels is a must add. Yes. Uh, Agreed. Samuels, to, to me, the two guys that I'm most interested out there are Samuels and <laughs> Ronald Jones. <laughs> I, I had to get it out too, man. I know. It's, it's, really, are. it's really tough for it, me to believe in Ronald Jones. But now three of the four weeks, he's been great. Tampa Bay is clearly wanting to run the ball as much as they can do to protect Jameis Winston, which has helped Jameis Winston. Uh, they're the second most rushing attempts in the NFL, averaging 26 per game. So Ronald Jones has looked great. He's the snap leader. Uh, I don't know what happened in that bizarro week two where it was like, hey, Ronald, just watch from the sideline. Yeah. But that, that threw everything off. It, it maybe, my maybe guess it's hard is to it's, trust. My guess is it was a, a, a blitz pickup situation against Carolina that just got him benched the last two weeks, number 19 at the running back position. This past week, number 17 at the running back position. And like you said, week one, he was 26. But he's he's establishing himself on an offense that Bruce Arians has had success running the football with, you know, and having fantasy running backs that are relevant. So the question is, would you rather have Ronald Jones, who seems to be more consistent, more volume, more work, running back 19, running back 17, or Jalen Samuels, who now in this new offense for only one week, but he was the running back nine. He was very utilized. If you have to make your waiver bid or your fab, which one would you go after first? I think that Ronald Jones, his his, uh, his track right now, the way that it is going, he seems like he is the safer ad to be getting that volume. But... I'm going to bet on the one-week performance of James Conner had eight targets. Jalen Samuels had eight targets. Like, If I can get a running back who's seeing eight to ten carries but then five-plus targets, I'll take that over the guy who's going to see 15 to 17 carries. So sure. I, I would I side going with Jalen Samuels. And then I think perhaps the bonus me. that he plays Wildcat, they keep that going. I'm not sure. And he, he completes 100% of his passes. Yes, yeah, when they're tap passes, that's going to be a really good accuracy rating. Other considerations at running back, you can pay attention to Jordan Wilkins. Yes. Uh, if if Marlon Mack misses the game, Jordan Wilkins would be the man to step in. I think he was out there for about 20% of snaps this past week. 
For this week, I would prefer Hines. Absolutely. Because they're taking on Kansas City. Naheem Hines is the receiving back. So that – I it, You saw the recipe the last week. The Colts are good, but <laughs> – yeah, I mean, they played. They had, they had a negative game script all last yeah. week. Naeem Hines was on the field for 45% of snaps. So, uh, But you still weren't happy, right? Six for 39. On, on He caught all six of his targets. It, yeah, he's a PPR yards. play. He's a PPR play. Right, PPR only. Yeah. Full PPR. Yeah. Triple PPR. Oh, then I'm interested. PPPPR. A Hines only league. The Peter so Piper Hines pizza, Ward, the PPR Hines. pick of the week. <laughs> yes. That's a throwback. <laughs> Uh, Ito Smith, Daryl Williams, Rashad Penny. Penny likely to be active on Thursday night football. Any interest there? He is a stash for me. Yeah, I for would sure. I would without a doubt be rostering him, but I don't think you can start him this week. I would I would no. pick him up. Um what about Daryl Williams? How, is do we have any inclination as to how long because Daryl Williams has now been very good for fantasy two weeks in a row. He's still even though Shady was the starter. I mean, he outsnapped him. He he was utilized in in a in a large way. So I don't know the status of Damian Williams, but I think you can start Daryl Williams as a flex play until Damian Williams returns. So I think that's pretty much how my recipe. Since we don't know the status update of Damian Williams right now for this week, and today is the day where people are going to have to make the decision: Do they go grab Daryl Williams if they can't get one of these other guys? Would you? want to stash him in hopes of of that yeah I, I would happily do that yeah I think Darrell Williams should be rostered no doubt especially with you know last week 50 50 snap care count with Shady Shady's had his injury problems and you could end up in a situation where if Shady goes down Darrell Williams is the guy for a few weeks on a, right. on the best offense in football uh, so. also another name to throw out there at running back he's still uh, he's still rostered in 63% of leagues. But there are plenty of leagues out there where Tevin Coleman, because he was on bye and people needed to make a move and he was injured, has been dropped. They're past their bye week. They're, as a team, the San Francisco 49ers have the most fantasy points at, at the running back position. Tevin Coleman could slot in as the starter or as the goal line back or as both. I, I would definitely make a strong push to him if he's out there on your waivers. If you want more of that, click down there, see the whole episode, click over there, subscribe to the show. We're here all year round. Do not miss it.